show. If you're new to our show and just joining us today, let me let you know how things work around here. Each week, we invite a patient who has been recently diagnosed with a new disease. And then, we ask them a series of questions about how they first met and how they feel about each other. Meanwhile, our in-house doctor will be listening via live web feed, and then she will give them some advice on how to either cure their relationship or make it death till they part. Today joining us, we have Stephanie from Ohio Northern University, who has recently been diagnosed with meningitis cryptococcus neoformans. Please do give me a warm welcome for them. Hello. Well, let's just get to the juicy part that all of America wants to know. How did the two of you first meet? Well, I guess you could say that it's your typical love at first sight story. A few weeks ago, I was just outside playing with bird's nests and pigeon poop when I came across this little fungus. I have AIDS, so I have a weakness for yeast fungus. I guess you could say I just couldn't resist her large capsule. Oh, isn't that just a precious story? Meningitis cryptococcus neoformin, is there anything that you would like to add? It was love at first sight for me as well. With her AIDS, she's immunosuppressed, so as soon as she inhaled me, I entered her lungs and attached to her alveolar macrophages. My body just couldn't resist it. It's true. I have a polysaccharide capsule with an antiphagocytosis barrier that produces antibody unresponsiveness, making it possible for me to enter the intra intracellular environment cause brain edema, and destroy cell membranes. Without heavy therapy, sh there's no way she's getting rid of me. <laughs> wow, it sounds like there's definitely a deep connection going on with this couple. Lots of tissue distortion, intracranial pressure, and aggressive inflammation going on. There definitely is. I do what I can so we can keep on growing. <laughs> to be honest though, sometimes I feel kind of confused lethargic, and nauseated, and occasionally I get a stiff neck and fever. And how does that make you feel? It, it honestly, it makes me want to continue to alter her mental status and possibly push her into a coma. Wow. What is love always feel like a battlefield, a battlefield? Now let's our into our next segment. Our very own doctor, Dr. Daisy, has been listening and will now be joining us via live web feed to share a little bit about what she thinks is going on with these two lovebirds. <laughs> no pun intended. Welcome, Dr. Daisy. Would you please shed some light? Most definitely. Yesterday, when I talked with each one of you individually, I performed a number of tests. On the patient, I performed a lumbar puncture and looked at cerebrospinal fluid cultures and stains. And then I performed an ELISA test for polysaccharide antigens in the CFS Sample. And what did you discover? Well, they have several options. In my opinion, though, I do not think our pair will be together too much longer. Stephanie needs to be admitted into the hospital and then needs to receive treatments that cryptococcus neoformans just isn't strong enough to keep up with. What kind of treatment are you talking about? I can give her the number of the spa that I go to and she can get all the treatments she wants there. Um, no, not those kind of treatments. What I'm talking about are antibiotics. Stephanie needs to receive one milligram per kilogram of body weight per day of amphotericin B through IV for six to 10 weeks. Amphotericin B associates with ergosterol and forms a transmembrane channel that leads to monovalent leakage. In addition, she needs to take 200 milligrams of acetaminophen, ibuprofen, naproxen, or diphenhydramine 30 minutes before receiving treatment to reduce the chance of having side effects. However, if she cannot tolerate amphotericin B, then for six to 10 weeks, she should receive four milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day of Ambisome through an IV. Ambisome works the exact same way as Amphotericin B. That's all just so interesting. Anything else? Yes, there are two other medications that she will need. She should take 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day of flutocytosine for six to 10 weeks. It works by intrafungally converting into the cytostatic fluorouracy that undergoes further steps of activation and then interacts as 5-fluorouridine triphosphate with RNA biosynthesis and disturbs the building of certain essential proteins. 
It also converts into 5 fluorodeoxyribuuridine monophosphate, which inhibits fungal DNA synthesis. The other medication she should take is 400 milligrams through an IV or orally a day for 10 to 12 weeks of fluconazole. Fluconazole inhibits the fungal cytochrome P450 enzyme 14 alpha de demethylase. Without these treatments, Stephanie will continue to be in this unhealthy relationship and it will be in death that they part. Stephanie, Cryptococcus Neoformans, I'm sorry, but the two of you will not survive together. Stephanie is now going to go off to the hospital and receive some treatment. Please take a moment and say your goodbyes. something from Stephanie and Cryptococcus Neoformin's story. I encourage you all to avoid contact with pigeon inhabited areas and also make sure you keep your immune system healthy. Start ARV therapy before your immune system even has a chance of becoming impaired. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of the newly diagnosed show. Stay healthy America. We'll see you again soon.